All right, this tutorial we are going to look at some stuff to do with microvoxels. That includes things like you're going to see on the Dojo Starter Home and actually a couple of the others, but it's most obvious here. Things like these dividers, the walls, these cool lights, also some lattices which are really easy to make with uh, microvoxels as well. So if you missed the previous tutorials about what are microvoxels, I would recommend looking back in the playlist and checking that out first. Um, and definitely if you're brand new to building in Landmark, uh, definitely start at the beginning and just understand what voxels are before you start building. It will help a lot just to understand the theory. All right, so let me remove this starter house that I had placed as a demonstration. Now we're on a nice blank claim. If you watched the previous tutorial, you know how to make a microvoxel already, but we'll just make one quick. A microvoxel is just a voxel of any material that's been shrunk down small. I will use obsidian, polished obsidian. It's pretty easy to see against the sand. I am just going to float a single voxel, normal size voxel, up in the air. And now I am going to use the smooth tool. Click on it a couple times, and you'll see that each time I click on it, it gets smaller. Now, exactly how small you want it um, is entirely up to you. That was three clicks, but play around and figure out what you want for what you want to make. At any rate, that is our microvoxel that we'll be working with. So, what can we do with it? We can do a ton of stuff with it. If we just paste it and then use our mouse wheel to paste a whole bunch, we're actually drawing a line as we go. And I can change direction with that. You'll notice that as I turn the corner I got a little angle. I can get rid of that easily by just repasting my microvoxel over that corner and you can see it's back to a sharp corner now. Um, now I can either do it manually the way, the way I had been doing or I can go into tweak mode by holding down control and again, as I turn a corner, it will create those little triangles in the corners. Just repasting right at the corner point will get rid of that. <clears throat> and I'm going to go two up and start drawing a line across. And two in, draw a line down. Again, just repasting it at those corners fixes those diagonal triangles. All right, so now we've got the start of something that looks kind of like those wall screens we were looking at, kind of like the screen behind me. Um, these are empty right now, and you can leave them empty if you want a window, but you might want to fill them in. And the easiest way to do that is to select, just select a line across, and uh, choose what I want to fill them in with. Now if I wanted to make a window, I might use glass. Either one of these would work. Or if I wanted to make more of a screen like this one, I would probably use stucco. And there's a number of different colors of stucco, so you can choose your shade. Or another nice option is um, alabaster. I like the raw alabaster. Um, if you have lots of that available, which I happen to, then uh, you could use that as well. So I will hit my number two, which is my fill tool. Close that out of the way. Okay, fill tool. And you'll notice in the modal toolbar that pops up when I select fill, there is an option here, E for fill. What that does is it will actually fill the air voxels, but it will not fill any voxel that already has something in it. So the black thin lines that I drew before with my microvoxel aren't touched, but it's painted the air in here uh, with alabaster. 
So you can see I've ended up with these nice flat panels. I can then copy this whole thing and paste it. as high as I want, and I've got great looking little wall panels or whatever I want to do with them. could also use that as a floor or a ceiling. Now that is the very simplest stuff with microvoxels, but you can do a lot more. Let me actually draw a stucco area on the ground so we can see clearly. the shadow is right in the way. You can go over there. All right, so again, I'm copying my microvoxel, paste it. Now if I start to go in diagonals, so I go one down and one across, what happens, as you can see, is that the second one I place causes the first one to be distorted, um, the point of it gets dragged out to meet it. That's because even though these are very small voxels that don't look like they touch, if they were full-size voxels, they would be like that. They are actually still occupying adjacent squares. So their corners always have to meet because voxels always have to touch the corners or sides of or faces of the voxels that are adjacent to them. So when I place the second microvoxel here, the first one I placed earlier was forced to stretch out so that their sides would always match. I can use this to do some kind of cool shapes. And I'm going to go to tweak mode so that I can figure out where that voxel is a little more easily. Okay. So if I now go one down, one across, I'm in where I placed my original box off. So if I go one down, one across again, and do the same thing on the other diagonal, I get the center voxel stretched in both directions. I can now copy this, and I have this interesting pointy thing, which I can use in a number of ways, um, but one of the easiest ways would just be to paste it every other voxel. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, so on. And now I'm going to rotate it. Oops. I'm going to rotate it on the green axis and paste it in between. And look what happens. Because it's the same voxel and it's shaped out of the same base microvoxel. It's not distorting these ones that I'm placing it in between. It's just making a perfectly interlocking lattice. So I can use this over and over to make window treatments, to make sci-fi floor lattices, whatever I want. And because I think as far as the game is concerned, each of these is a solid voxel like this, I can actually walk on this, no problem at all. So this makes a real nice sci-fi type flooring, among other things. If I select that, paint it something cool looking. Um, I really like the tin and the iron um, for sci-fi looks, so let's try to hammered tin. Uh, but you can get a lot of nice looks with a lot of the materials. So there we have an easy lattice. Super easy. And if I had used a fatter voxel, I only smoothed out one time, I could do exactly the same. I would just end up with a much fatter pattern. So choose your voxel thickness, as I said before, um, depending on what you want it to look like. So let's quickly look at this. And we 
rotate. So again, it's exactly the same technique, but it looks significantly different when you use a bigger microvoxel. So somewhere in between might be what you want. Play around. Alrighty, these angles, like I made here, just by placing the microvoxels three in a diagonal, can be used to make this kind of screen on the diagonal. This panel I made over here is at right angles, and that's fine if you want right angles, but maybe I want something that goes in a diagonal. So I can I can do solid things like this, and I can flip it around like this. In this case, I might actually want to copy these guys on the end so that I have a little joint going on there. And there we have a nice zigzag screen, which obviously I can repeat at another another couple of times if I want a wide one. Now that's a solid color. Again, I can paint this. Let me select that alabaster again. I really like that look. So that's a solid alabaster panel framed in obsidian. Um, I can repaste the obsidian line too every second or, or more um, spaces apart. If I do them exactly side by side, they're going to join like that, which you might want. Um, but if I want a thin line, they'll have to be at least two apart because I need the one space of alabaster in between. And then, of course, I can repeat that on the other side and again. Just copy, rotate, and repeat to make screens like that. Or lights. If I put a light source inside this, this white light orb, I use tweak mode by holding down control to kind of center it and move it down inside. Super nice light source and that's the lights in the starter home, the dojo starter home, were made. Uh, the one thing I have not showed you is connecting these to the ground. You're going to want to put little feet there. And to do that, you're just going to want to take your same microvoxel. You're going to want to copy it. Let's float it up in the air here. And in a previous tutorial, which I believe I called line tool magic, I showed you this trick, but I'm just using the line tool, clicking a couple times on the bottom of the voxel. It's going to force that microvoxel to stretch down to where a normal voxel would end. Having done that, I can now place that directly on the ground without causing any warping effects. Oops. So I would just paste that under my corners here. Um, this is going to have the same caveat as we saw when I initially created the screen in that when you place it right away you'll get those little triangles um, so actually what I'm gonna need if I don't like that look which actually is kinda cool what I'm gonna need to do is have it be at least two voxels off the ground Oops. so that um, ah, why did you do that? Stupid Flora. I'm just going to paint this so it doesn't keep growing ferns in it. 
All right. So I will want to have this be one microvoxel at the corner. And then And I would actually paste this underneath. And I had put my original light a little too close to the ground to do that the first time. So I would do that. And then I would somewhat tediously recopy my marker voxel. And the reason I have to keep doing this is because the most recently pasted voxel is the one that keeps its shape. So when I put the one underneath it, it caused the other to stretch. But now I've got that, I can copy that leg easily to all four corners. And there we go. Uh, watch the line tool tricks tutorial uh, if you want to know a little more about that. Same would apply to these screens if you want them to have feet. Alrighty, um, that is stuff to do with microvoxels. And I think, yeah, that probably covers the basics. Now you can make pretty much everything that you saw in that um, starter home, the dojo style starter home, as well as some cool lattices. Hope that was helpful.